Hey YouTube, Devor here again. This time we are going to be tackling the 2.1 task in the MVP Math 3 textbook. This is the first task in the logarithmic module, which is actually one of my favorites. It's um, actually a lot of fun, and plus, who doesn't like logarithms? This is called log logic. We're going to be starting with looking at a diagram of something that we've used before. This should look very familiar. I believe this was part of the 1.4 task where you have an input, you have a function, you do something to that input, and then you take it apart. Basically, if, we, if we're taking 2 to an x power, if we want to find x, we need to take log base 2 of both sides. Uh, so here's the relationship that we want to keep track of here. So we have two to, if 2 to the third power equals 8, then log base 2 of 8 equals 3. So you can see that really we're just rearranging some of our terms. And instead of our answer being 2 to the third power equals 8, it's 2 to the what power equals 8. And this part is our exponent. Let me just circle both these. There we go. All right, so any time that we take something to a power, we can use logarithms. A popular base, especially in physics and in engineering, is base 10. So 10 to the first is 10, so log base 10 of 10 equals 1. This is the logarithm that is on your scientific calculators. It's just assumed to be base 10. So if, if you see a logarithm which just says log of 10, assume that it's base 10. That's just a good assumption. So in this task, what we're going to do is use some of our notation to think about logarithms as numbers, because really logarithms are just numbers. They're just really complicated looking numbers. A lot like, say, sine, cosine, and tangent, it's the same idea. We can put things into sine, cosine, and tangent, and they're just numbers. They're just complicated numbers. Let's go through really quickly, just as a reminder, and start actually calculating some of these logarithms out. So the question we're really asking ourselves is uh, we have our base 3. 3 to the what power will give me 3. Well, that one, that's 1. 3 to the what power gives me 9. Well, let's count up by powers here. 3 to the first power is 3. 3 to the second power is 9. So 2. I'm going to skip over C just for a moment because we have log base 3 of 1. Now this is 3 to the what power gives me 1. Uh, this is an example of one we can basically use as an identity because 3 to the 0th power equals 1. Now anything to the 0th power equals 1. So if you ever see anything that says like say log base 10 of 1, log base 5 of 1, whatever, that always will equal 0. Okay, finally, log base 3 of 1 third. Whenever you see something going from not a fraction to a fraction, that is a red flag for a negative exponent. In this case, pencil this in here, it's 3 to the what power gives me 1 over 3 to the first power, which from my exponent rules gives me negative 1. And then this one also, this one gives me negative 2. 3 to the negative second power is 1, 1 over 9. Um, so this is an example of negative exponent rules. If you need a reminder, be a good time to actually look over some of those negative exponent rules. We're going to see them a lot. Now that we have gone through and identified the values for all these, we're going to just put them on our number line. So neg E is here, uh, C is here, D is here, A is here, and B is here. So we're going to go through here and we're just going to start solving these. Okay. Good thing to learn how to do is how to basically start by start counting by powers on your fingers. It really does come in handy. So for instance, when we're looking at powers of 3, we have 3, 
9, 27, 81. 3 to the 4th power gives me 81. A trick for powers of 10 is if you don't know what power of 10 it is, count the number of zeros. So there's 1, 2 zeros. That means we are looking at 10 to the 2nd power. Whenever the base and the big number are the same, you can use this as an identity. It's just 1. Okay, 5. Powers of 5. 5. 25. Five, so this is to the second power. And then I learned how to count base two on my fingers when I was uh, when I was in college in computer science. It's really helpful. We go two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, two to the fifth power. So let's go ahead and just start writing everything in. Let's see, A goes here. B C D, E. Now, I put a comma in here. That means that they are both on the same value. That's totally okay. All right. Now, these are just identities. So we've got base. These two numbers are the same, which means this is 1. These two numbers are the same, so this is 1. We have 1 as our big number, so to say. That means it's to the 0th power. This is also the zero power. So let's see. C comma D, A comma B. All right. Now we've got a lot of fractions. This is everybody's favorite. Whenever we're doing fractions, um, I always look at the bottom part of our fraction because, you know, we're looking at base two, and we've got a four down here on the bottom. So it's going to be a negative power. I just need to figure out how negative. To do that, I look at the bottom of the fraction. And again, I start counting up by powers of 2. 2, 4. 4 is 2 to the second power, which means that my exponent is negative 2. I have base 10. Let's just count our zeros here. We've got 1, 2, 3. That's on the bottom of the fraction, so it's negative 3. Powers of 5, 5, 25, 125, so this is negative 3. And then, well, 6 and 6 is going to be negative 1. Oops, they didn't leave us, leave us enough room. Let's fix that. Because we have uh, A, B, and C, and then D out here. So th this should be pretty straightforward. Now we're going to start getting a little less straightforward. Because in some of these others, we're going to have them not coming out to whole numbers necessarily. Uh, so I'm going to kind of show you how that works. Let's start out here with log base 4 of 16. 4, 16, this is 2. Base 2 to 16, we've got 2. 4, 8, 16, so to the fourth power. And then I'm going to skip C. You'll see why in a second. 16, 16, they're the same, so this is going to be 1. Now, if we have 8 and 16, well, let's count our powers of 8 here. We've got 8, 64. Ooh, okay, it's definitely going to be between 1. That's the way I read it. It's going to be between 1 and 2. And I want to make a gut check here on which one it's probably going to be closer to. So is 16 closer to 8 or 16 closer to 64? I think it's closer to 8, so I'm going to circle the 1, which means it's, pro it's going to be a decimal between 1 and 2, probably closer to 1. That's a good little gut check. Let's go ahead and write these out here. We've got uh, A, B, and then I'm going to write C kind of there between 1 and 2, closer to 1. Then D goes right here. All right. Oh, I think that almost all of these are going to end up, let me see here, uh, log base 2 of 5, 2, 4, 8. So it's going to be between 2 and 3. And I think it's going to be closer to 2 because I, 5 is closer to 4 than it is to 8. Okay, 5 and 10, 5, 
25 is going to be between 1 and 2. I'm going to say it's probably closer to 1. Log base 6 of 1, this is an identity. Log base 5 of 5, also an identity. And then base 10 of 5. 10, 100. So this is going to be between 1 and 2. Much closer to 1. Well, actually, no. Scratch that. It's actually going to be 0 and 1 because 5 is less than 10, and hmm, I think, hmm, you know, let me double check here. That's why we have calculators. It is closer to 1, that's what I was thinking. So, okay, let's start putting this in. A goes here, B goes here. C, D, then E right there. Okay. All right, now we are all in base 10. So let's just, again, I don't think, I think only one of these is actually going to work out to a whole number. Uh, let's see. 10, 100, it's going to be between 1 and 2. and closer to 2. Um, 150 is between 10 and 1,000, so, or 100 and 1,000, so it's going to be between 2 and 3, closer to 2. This one is going to actually come out to 3. This one is between 100 and 1,000, so this one's also between 2 and 3. But notice that this number is significantly bigger. So it's going to be closer to 3. All right. A, B, C, D, like that. OK, I think we've only got one more. And, and this is actually kind of a fun one. If you notice, we have, for instance, belt log base 3 of 3 to the second power. Remember that when we're solving for logarithms, we're actually looking for the exponent of our base. Conveniently, it gives us our exponent right in the problem. So it's 2, negative second. Always double check. Make sure that the bases are the same. And you can go ahead and use this as an identity as well. It, we're going to go in more detail into exactly why that rule works. But for the moment, feel free to use it because it's, it's convenient and they give it to you, so why not? And they forgot a three for us. Okay. All right, so we're going to, this is now the uh, kind of the definitions part. Uh, we're going to be working through some of these, uh, whether they're always, sometimes, or never true. So let's start working through these. The value of log base b of x is positive. This is sometimes true. The reason why is that we can have negative exponents. We've seen some up there that are negative. Okay. Log b to the x is not a valid expression if x is a negative number. This is uh, this one. I'm going to say it's always true. And this comes mostly from the definition of a logarithm. Our definition specifically says that x has to be greater than 0. That's just part of our definition of logarithms. And here's why. Um, here's the example that I like to use. We have uh, 2 to, let's see. 
So we have, say I want to put in log base 2 of negative 8, for instance. That is undefined because there's no way that we can make that work. Um, so there's my count. That's the reason why. It just leads to some really uncomfortable, undefined moments. Okay, log base b of 1 equals 0 for any base b is greater than 1. This is always true. In fact, it is so true, go ahead and just use it as an identity. You don't even have to prove it. It will always work. Same with this one. Always, oops, always true. And again, identity. These are identities. All right, so this last one, it's a little bit deceiving. Log base 2 of x is less than log base 3 of x for any value of x. This is only this is never true. And here's why. Um, it's because uh, log, it's because when you're talking about powers of 2, um, you hit whole numbers faster than in log base 3. So here's some examples. They, they're the same at 1, and then we've got 2, 4, 8, just to kind of list some of the powers of 2. Then we have 3, 9, 27. Basically, the bigger that this gets, the the, the, the bigger that the whole number gets, the slower the value of the logarithm will actually grow. And that's true as you keep getting smaller and smaller as well. Uh, it's just the way that these go. It's just the way of it. Um, the bigger, the bigger the base, actually the faster it grows and the faster it shrinks. Which is a kind of, it's not really that intuitive, but it's worth talking about. Okay, log base b of b to the n power equals n. This is always true. This is actually an exponent rule. So this is just worth having. And it's one of three major exponent rules which make exponents easier to deal with. All right, that was task 2.1 in the Mathematics Vision Project uh, Math 3 textbook. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me and I will answer as best I can. And as always, please like and subscribe. Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.